What's up everybody? Welcome to the South Florida, Florida East Coast and CSX HO Scale Joint Line Railroad. Today's update is a little bit quick. Um, actually I'm doing this midweek in preparation for our upcoming Harvest Festival weekend with the East Coast HO Scale Exhibitor Society. So the updates, while plentiful, will be brought to you straight to the point meat and potatoes no messing around no delaying no lingering no rambling okay I'm already rambling let's get started alright so the biggest change that you can already see is that not only is the um, extension that I added last time now connected to the main line it is also ballasted so there is now a brand new road bed that I bought over the Veterans Day holiday as well as, of course, no shortage of ballast that is already laid across half of the existing display space. Um, what gets a little bit interesting though is that the outer rail, this is actually the second time that I attempted to lay the outer track. There was a bit of an issue the first time around where the um, outer track was dipping so much that any outer racks that I tried to run behind anything would separate immediately. So I remedied that by ripping it up and unfortunately I have a little bit of carnage right here in the form of a lost stick of track. I ripped it up and uh, relayed it from scratch but luckily there are like little adjustments that I was able to make that allowed it to be a little bit more level and so far after testing it time and time again um, the outer axe rolled fine. There was a kink right here that previously caused the trains to derail. I soldered all the joints by the way but of course with the new progress that kink was fixed um, so all the joints are soldered unfortunately as a casualty I burned my finger but that happens to everybody um, all the ex all the permanently mounted joints are soldered uh, more to come when I add more track bought a couple new sticks of wood track which are not shown those will bring in the inner modal yard probably and of course here's your uh, midwest road bed that I'll be laying in various sections so since I did this curve this past week and the next time I get around to doing work I'll probably work on this side and hopefully have this table fully built. Now the red supports that you see here will not be used. I'm going to be buying new legs because they as you can see make it stand a little bit on the tall side so I'll get the new legs, make the new table and uh, the layout will start looping around and I will promise you guys that I will not make the same mistake I made on the other side and jump to laying the curves and rushing them before actually taking the time to think about them. Later I will show you guys operating footage of the uh, Florida East Coast Jeevos as obviously I put away the CSX units for the upcoming Echoes Harvest Festival. Another part of this review is serving as a mini review of the new Atlas Masterline cars that I was able to get a hold of. On the left is a CSX coil car, which when I saw this thing at Ready to Roll, I knew that no matter the price of it, $33, I had to have it. And then this Reaging Chemicals car, which just like the rest of this block of cars that you see here, just screams out CSX Q453, which is the Miami train that I'm modeling. So all these cars you see in South Florida in general, um, I'm not sure about this uh, Reagent. It might be a little too long in comparison to the uh, prototype. But I'm sure at some point this 20,000 gallon hydrochloric acid car has shown up on this train. So there's no doubting that. Um, of course we have this Athern Gunderson that I found at the National Train Show. This other one which is really coveted. I'll get into that a little bit later as I continue to ramble about these cars. And of course the pressure that I bought uh, four years ago at Plant City. Um, but this video is actually going to be talking more about how I'm impressed with Atlas's new direction, how they're taking things a little bit seriously. Um, they've added cut levers and air hoses as you can see here on cars like this. This is part of their master line. And the uh, coil cars also have that detail. Unfortunately though, these cars continue to retain the old uh, Atlas knuckles which are horrible. They, they break open not like they, they break open, but that's not something that you see in the prototype. Um, so I went ahead and replaced all of them with KD-158s. These are the uh, scale knuckle coupler with whiskers attached, so you don't have to do a two-piece assembly like the number 5. I love the number 5, by the way. 
Um, so as a consequence of that, I was able to also remove the magnetic uh, stopper as I guess since it gives the image of, the impression of an air hose, it's no longer necessary since there are already air hoses in these cars. Also, as you saw in the, uh, as you may have seen in the Echoes video from Perrine back in October, this BNSF car somehow had a broken knuckle, replaced it with a KD-158, and I have to say these Atherin Gunnersons are a pain in the neck to replace knuckles. You have to remove parts, and I ended up breaking the cut lever in the process, but I glued it back in. No biggie. So that says about that. Um, Unfortunately, as soon as I got this car out of the box, there's always that flaw that you're going to be breaking the cables, and I broke a little bit of wire. And also, I noticed that one of the um, connecting uh, rods was not even attached, and I broke another one, so a little bit of tester's plastic cement luckily fixed that. But I also noticed that I'm missing a grab iron. Um, it's on the other side, I think. It's probably this one. Yeah, this camera doesn't want to focus. Well, no, it's on the other side of the car. But one of those gray grab irons that are mounted to the ed uh, to the uh, platform at the edge are missing. Nowhere to be seen. But I do like what Atlas is offering, and I hope they keep it up and, of course, get better. Maybe they'll adopt the KD number no. fives that the BLMA cars are getting into future runs. And I'm glad that they're keeping up uh, the release of modern freight cars like you see here. Now another rant about the Atherin 60 foot Gunnersons, patiently waiting for the new run of tee boxes. Um, it's just not fair to modelers like me that these tee boxes become incredibly hard to find. Old logo, new logo, you name it. I was very lucky to find this at Warwick's about eight years ago, and that store is officially gone, by the way. Um, they're making the new run. I scrambled around, pre-ordered what I could. Um, believe I'm past the deadline for everything. However they took the pre-orders so hopefully I get them and I'm sure even if there may be a conflict I'm sure there will be at least one or two people that pull out maybe citing that they cannot pay for it or they, cho or they chose to order it from another store so fingers crossed I get two new box cars next year um, unfortunately there will be the old logo I'm kind of interested in the new logo and it's very frustrating surfing around on eBay and seeing them auction for no less than $50. This is a $30 car and it should stay a $30 car. And I hope uh, the folks at Athen are kind of listening that they need to make this car in much more abundance. Focus on cars like this. That definitely have a market. They will not lose out if they keep producing it. They're, there's no way that this car can be overproduced. These are one of those train cars you cannot overproduce because people will always demand and the same goes for Atlas and their center beams which I only have one no I don't even have an Atlas I have a Walther's and also the same goes for other manufacturers with other high demand cars um, I know it's easy for me to say and hard, and I maybe I need to familiarize myself with the logistics but I'm sure there is a way that these things can be better mass produced and when there's a will, there's a way. Anyway, um, that will bring us to this side. I'm going to power up the FEC Jeevos and uh, test the Autoracks and the intermodal cars along this new ballasted stretch of track. Also offering you guys a scenic view of the newly ballasted sections. Hope you guys enjoy. As you recall, this is an NC power cab 2 amp system. Um, unlike the previous times where I've taped the wires to the uh, joiners, this time of course with the magic of soldering, I was able to solder the copper wire into the uh, two older joiners and of course attach them to tracks. This is nowhere near the final setup. Um, it will be of course adjusted with feeder and bus wires. This is actually the first time these engines will be running on the new track. Um, still curing from the glue. There are expected bumps in the road. And for the first time you guys are seeing FEC motors on actual concrete track for a change. Not wooden ties like in 
Gold Coast Ricos. Not discrediting their work, I'm just saying that this is the correct setup for Florida East Coast operation in the HO scale. And this is actually the well, this is I actually shot a version before I replaced the track on the outer loop. This is actually the second time I'm running the FEC motors on this layout. But it's not nearly the second time that I've placed these on display here. be a dead spot there, but, uh, okay, I spoke too soon, that'll be taken care of by feeders, we have a stretch, Ready for the formula run by, but unfortunately, since the track ends right here, they're gonna stop about mid train. Fix the CD programming on the uh, Jeevos, just like the scale trains units. So the good sites have crossed for a very long time. Not good. I do not see this happening. There's a workaround for this, and that's uh, auto racks will not be put on the head end. Now the feature of this curve is that it's super elevated, so that there's a slight banking, as you can see here. Here are a couple of unfair considerations that I made when testing on the other direction, because coming this way, which is what I will call Railroad South, it does manage to pull the uh, auto racks through. The main problem is the, I believe the 817's uh, coupler is hanging a little bit too low, actually. Um, in comparison, the H20 has got a higher uh, rig and it pulls just fine going the same direction where you'd expect a separation. Um, even if um, there was a big improvement redoing this track layout because the solder joint there, like I said earlier, had that kink where this car, no matter what I tried, would always derail when I took the curve. Um, the curve is a little bit wider and where there was previously an overhang issue, I believe that issue is minimized, which I believe the Jeevos are standing in that spot right now. Um, I was able to push it a little bit outwards so that the overhang from an auto rack will not cause any cars on the in track to hit it. Um, before I try, I test, I did a test run, and sure enough, uh, these auto racks got hit. But anyway, for the record, you get to see that the uh, auto racks. Now make it through this very deviled curve. Of course, because it's really late at night, I did turn the sound down, but anything to test it. But anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me on this short video. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and until next time, which will likely be at harvest which is at the uh, Fair Expo Center from HQ where we're at the FEC and CSX join line. This is TE.